Let's start the World of Ovarian Cancer Day session with surgery. And I want to tell you today that surgery is not surgery as usual. And I know and I'm really impressed by all the patients who underwent surgery in ovarian cancer because this is one of the toughest procedures in medicine at all. And I like to explain you what happened and what are the reasons for ovarian cancer surgical procedures and why we indicate and what are the quality indicators. So what is really new in ovarian cancer is that we know that there's maybe no other tailored strategy than surgery. Because surgery takes in general 5 to 10 to 15 hours and includes thousands of moves in a space of at least 1.2 square meter with very fragile organs. And the secret is to remove the lesions and to preserve the healthy tissues. So what is really important is that surgery is not defined only by the surgeon. It's always a teamwork, it's a professional and an interdisciplinary challenge. So surgery and the environment, so the infrastructure, this is the difference and that's the reason why we at the German Ovarian Cancer Foundation but even in Engage and ESGO demand that these kind of surgeries have to be performed in certified, experienced gynecologic cancer centers. So what is even new that surgery is implemented in the umbrella of different elements of treatments. So surgery, chemotherapy and subsequent maintenance target therapy. This is the new paradigm in ovarian cancer. So surgery is the only tool what can deliver the diagnosed ovarian fallopian or pyrotron carcinoma. Because based on the biopsies you can make the diagnose by microscopic and immunohistochemistry and molecular pathological characterizations. Surgery is always the basis to describe the spread, the tumor pattern, and to define the tumor stage. What is the backbone to define the subsequent treatment? If I have an early stage of ovarian cancer, only two, three, or six cycles chemotherapy is mandated. If you have an advanced disease based on the tumor pattern, then surgery followed by chemotherapy and maintenance treatment is the gold standard. So this is a graph showing you that we discriminate in general between early and advanced stage. The level of separation between early and advanced disease is in general the pelvic area. So cancer cells, cancer, cancer lesions above the pelvic are in general defined as advanced disease, stage 3 and 4, and below it's more stage 1 or 2. But stage is not only enough to define the individual prognosis because prognosis is generally a sum of health and disease. And a tumor pattern above the liver is completely different than a tumor in the liver. So it's very important before you go interpretation to have all the information regarding tumor biology, histology, tumor 
pattern and even to know what are the symptoms and the other elements defining health. And health is defined by psychologically, physically and socially compounds. So before I go deeper in surgery, I'd like to highlight that since 2014, we separate low-grade pathways from high-grade pathways. Low-grade ovarian cancer found their origin in the ovary. High-grade ovarian cancer in general have the precursor cancer cells coming from the fallopian and then run to the ovary or to the peritoneal surface. That's very important in diagnosis and in the treatment modalities. And that's the reason if we have a patient with a genetic defined ovarian breast cancer syndrome, we offer in general the prophylactic adnectomy, including the part of the fallopian. So I just brought all the infrastructure to you that you know that many, many people try their best to take care on your surgery. So at least three to four, sometimes five surgeons for five to 15 hours. We have two, three nurses supporting us, bringing out the instruments, we have our team from the anesthesia, including the nurse. So many, many people work together interprofessionally and interdisciplinary to be sure that we can achieve the best surgical outcome. So, you know, prehabilitation wants to bring your health status in a better condition, a better stage, because every medical intervention will decrease, will weaken your strength. So I'm really proud to bring to the World of Iron Cancer Day this topic, prehabilitation to surgery, to you, because we know that if you train the patient before surgery, physically, by activity training to apply workouts, you know, all the modalities. If we decrease the pain before, if we increase the HB, the hemoglobin, the blood levels, if we improve the nutrition status, maybe by support of nutrition orally or parenterally. If we inform, educate, train the patient about the disease management, we have better outcome to decrease complication and to bring patient much earlier in her situation before they suffer from cancer disease. So this is what we mean with ERAS, enhanced recovering after surgery, and what we just introduced from Charité and from Essen with the German Ovarian Cancer Foundation and the other societies to bring the empowerment of the patient into this setting and to start very early in a one to three week schedule to train to prepare you and I'm proud that in my center we started since now more than half a year that patients go by their own food into the theater, onto the table, not in the bed, not in the chair, to preserve empowerment and confidence. And this is, I think, very important that we try to introduce this program to surgery, but even to other medical intervention to decrease complications and to increase the quality of life before. And I know if cancer is in the room, everybody, 
is hurry, in a hurry and want to treat early, quick, rapidly, immediately. But based on our knowledge in science, we know you have at least, at least one to eight weeks time before you go in the next intervention. So we can train the patient one to three weeks before surgery. We can train the patients at least up to eight weeks before they start to chemotherapy. We can train if we need up to 11 weeks before maintenance treatment. This, I think, is a new area of surgery, what is still an evolution. And again, it's amazing marathon uh, you underwent, and I'm really impressed, and I know um, there are many, many questions what not be answered. So only two messages, and I brought two trials to you, and want to thank you for the community to be part of this development. That first surgery is the key point in primary ovarian cancer, where you achieve complete resection, and even HIPEC. I know it sounds attractive to put something locally, but it's not a localized disease and that's the reason why all international and national guidelines don't recommend HIPEC and it can even harm you. So let's go to surgery. Surgery is open surgery. I know that, this, uh, that it's a big um, intervention, but you need a big scar to look everywhere in the space of more than 1.2 square meter and to remove the tumor lesions what can be above uh, the diaphragm, beside the bowel, and in every second case we have to resect a part of the bowel to make uh, anastomosis. So two stories from science to go back, to echo to you. And this one was regarding the lymph node dissection. So you see in the blue graph, the individual vessels, the lymph vessels running from the ovary to the paraortic region. And the question in the trial, in the so-called line trial was, make it sense regarding quality of life, regarding overall survival, to remove after bowel resection or preterectomy even the lymph nodes. And that was a randomized trial and I'm proud to be part of this. And I, I conclude for you the study that there's no indication if they are not affected, they are not suspicious to resect them because it will increase the surgical time, it will increase complication and decrease quality of life including sexuality. And the second trial I want to bring up is the desktop trial for patients who relapsed after primary surgery, primary chemotherapy and um, treatment. And we did a randomized trial in a global network comparing surgery alone in combination with chemotherapy in comparison to chemotherapy alone. And the conclusion was, yes, that surgery will influence survival, but if you only reduce cancer, not reject all of the lesions, then you are inferior to the only chemotherapy arm. I brought to you the complex elements for the treatment decision making process. I want to empower you even to tell the doctor your patient's perspective, your preferences, your expectation, your experiences, your resilience. This is the key for you to bring surgery in a better way. And again, it should be applied in certified, validated cancer centers and to use modern aspects to bring surgery in this three color model. Surgery as acute treatment, chemotherapy, acute treatment and maintenance approach. And the advanced disease. My final remarks is regarding target therapy, what is really a milestone in ovarian cancer management, including the PARP inhibitors, including the angiogenesis approaches. But do we need still surgery? 
do we need to do five, ten hours? And this is a subgroup analyzer of one of the trials. And yes, even in the area of the target therapies, we need surgery in the best quality issue. And that's the reason why we from the German Ovarian Cancer Foundation and in collaboration with Engage and all the societies are so much fighting to centralize still ovarian cancer surgery. And I want to conclude with a citate of Ernst Baum, one of my former directors in the Charité, the surgery is craft, craft, but indication is science. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.